of one of the most haunted places on Earth. You know, we, we've seen things, we've heard things, we've smelt things, we've felt things. You are going to be alone. Okay. On the fifth floor. No. <gasps> oh my gosh. I'm going alone to the body shoot. Can you knock for me, please? Shit. This place alone is a completely different animal. We are literally laying in the same spot that 6,000 other bodies laid. The voice that's coming through is like deep and growly and does not sound happy. <gasps> Welcome to Waverly Hills. Something about pulling up to Waverly Hills just has a completely different feeling than any other location I've ever been. Now this is rumored to be one of the most haunted places in the world, but this is the first time I will literally be alone in the entire building. Well, not quite alone. Savannah will be there. <laughs> How do you feel, Savannah? Um, I'm pretty... Scared? What's going on guys? I'm Kalani Ghost Hunter and tonight we are about to be alone inside of Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Now I'm here with my wife and I'm about to make her do some things tonight that she is not going to be very happy about. But this building right here was a tuberculosis sanatorium and thousands of people literally died here. Some of the activity that people get in this building will literally send a shiver up your spine. And from all of the shadow people, to the creeper, to the body shoot, this building has everything that your nightmares could be filled with. And we're gonna be here tonight alone. All right guys, so I have Savannah here and she's not very happy because I told her I'm gonna make her do some things tonight that she's not necessarily going to enjoy. But this building is freaking massive. If you've never been here, just Trying to get a bit of the size reference here. It is a huge building. Probably one of the larger locations that we've done. Um, just like Saratoga. And remember what we had happen at Saratoga. Saratoga was freaking wild. So I can't imagine what might happen here. So Saratoga was wild. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and go check it out. But this place is like Saratoga on roids. It's a lot bigger, a lot more death and the paranormal activity here is freaking crazy. So guys, this facility is 187,000 square feet. It is freaking huge. Um, we have a lot of ground to cover tonight. You can't even really comprehend how big it is until you're standing. Wait, say that again? Why am I doing my hands like this? How big is it? I'm gonna put my hands down. How, but, but, okay, but really, you can't comprehend the size of the building, right? And so okay, so, oh, you're talking about the building. Sorry, I, I got a... Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, okay, anyway, so this building is huge and we have a lot of ground to cover, as I was saying, but I don't think we're gonna be able to cover it all together. Now, I don't know about this. I don't, I don't, I don't think that I'm okay going off on my own. Well, let's go. Okay, so I sent Savannah away to do B-roll, but what she does not know is that I'm actually going to be sending her into this building with only an infrared camera and a walkie-talkie. Whenever it gets dark, she is literally getting sent off on her own with just an infrared, a piece of ghost hunting equipment, and a walkie-talkie. She's gonna have to walk through Waverly Hills in complete darkness. So I'm hoping a shadow man, or maybe even the creeper comes out because I want Savannah to be scared. Okay, so we are doing our first walkthrough here and we're literally going into the body chute, which everyone that died here would end up rolling out through this tunnel. Now I can tell you some interesting facts. We actually measured it on uh, Friday. From the wooden door down to the bottom of the chute is 626 feet. From the lip here down to the bottom, it's 427. It's at about a 45 degree angle with 153 steps. This is where I tell everybody to come if they're trying to hear something. As you can tell, it echoes really nice up here. And that tends to carry 
and it brings me to my favorite paranormal experience. I had a group of about eight gentlemen, we were doing the overnight. I bring them down here to show them my favorite pieces of graffiti. My favorite fact is as soon as we turn that corner back there, we're six feet underground. Um, so they were about 10 feet behind me. And I'm not one to react to stuff when I, when I see it because I don't want to influence anybody else's investigation. So when we take that corner that brings you six feet under, I hear whispers coming down from the bottom. I don't react to it. Like I said, they're talking amongst themselves, so they're not paying a bit of attention. We get here and I'm talking about how long it is. Then they hear it. 153 steps. It's step, step, long step. You can make out that step, step, long step. Something was walking up, making about a third of the way up, turning back around and going back down. They hear that, we all get quiet. I turn off my light and say, okay guys, can you show me what a yes looks like? No sooner than I get that out of my mouth, we hear. Everybody gets excited. Say, okay, we're in for it. I start a asking the yes or no questions. And uh, with that, I look at how timely and uh, accurate it is to my questions. It was responding very quick, um, about half accurate. Uh, just sitting here going to town asking questions everybody's asking questions and all of a sudden it just stopped we're sitting here in the pitch black waiting about 15 20 seconds hoping for that response then uh, we hear that stomp again except this time it was stomping up the steps running towards us no sooner than I can turn my flashlight on and tell these guys to run they were already beating me around to the corner uh, I like to tell everybody they found their way back up to the safe zone. When I got up there, I was like, well, why'd you leave me down there? Apparently it didn't want me in the bottom either. I tell everyone that they regained their composure and found their way down here and spent about four hours of their eight hours trying to recreate what they just ran away from. It's so much different when there's light coming in. It's a lot less intimidating, isn't it? Yeah. It's like. I tell everyone the more it affects everyone differently. The way it treats me is not going to be the way that it treats you. The way it treats you is not going to be the way it treats you. This is usually where I start off my investigation. I come in here alone, crawl in that bottom rack, and lay for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's almost like it's like a reset on my body. It lets me calm down and I'm not as uh, anxious. That way when I go out to the main hospital and I feel that my stomach drops and all those hairs start prickling up on the back of my neck. I could relate it to more of a paranormal experience instead of just, that's my nerves getting the better of me walking through this creepy building. Um, I could tell you about all the disembodied humming that we get going on down here. But like I said, this is my favorite place to come investigate and it's due to one little boy. Um, he usually hangs out on the right hand side of the morgue rack. He's very, uh, I like to say he's intelligent. Anything that you bring down here that lights up, he usually likes to mess with it. Uh, I've got his name through a spirit box. I don't want to tell you his name because if you make contact with him, he will talk. Uh, his birthday was May 2nd. And his favorite food is vanilla ice cream. But the quickest way to get him to talk is just to ask him about his mom. For some reason, he seems to be a mama's boy. <laughs> he said, uh, my favorite paranormal story from the whole building comes from in here. I had two women with me uh, this night. They thought they were going to be brave enough to walk through the building all by themselves. I tell everybody that they had me with them all night. Quick little rundown. One was standing right there. I was standing right about here and the other one was standing here. We had a trip wire wrapped around the morgue, the morgue racks. Had my rim pod in the middle of the rack. And we had about four cat balls littered out throughout here. I go on and start talking. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Bloop, trip our blips. It's like, oh, that's cool. And I ask it, you want to play a game? Peekaboo. Nothing's happening. I was like, oh, maybe he's too old for peekaboo. How about hide and seek? As soon as hide and seek comes out of my mouth, the rim pod starts dancing, going crazy. He's like, oh, that's ironic. And then about the time I'm thinking, that's cool, we get some cat balls moving back in the back corner. Say, okay, is that what you want to play? As soon as I say that, the rim pot stops humming. 
I'm gonna count. Count to five. As soon as I hit five, the cat balls stop lighting up. I go, oh hell. I gotta start peeking underneath the tables like I'm looking for a little kid. It's at like two o'clock in the morning, it's dark in here. Nothing's going on. Oh, gotcha. Look in the bathroom. Nothing. It's not until I walk over here and stick my head in that bottom morgue rack, everything lit up. Cat balls start lighting up. The tripwire lights up. Now, I've seen all the lights light up on a tripwire, but this time it was like multiple colors. So I thought that was really crazy. The rim pods going off, I was like, him telling me you found me. Now, I am gonna give you a little history because uh, I had a guest ask me this on one of my tours, and now I got this little fun tidbit of history stuck in my head, and I like to put it inside everybody else's head. Waverly Hills was an innovator. Uh, morale was really high on their uh, charts. At its peak, we were losing about 25 patients a day, roughly a patient an hour. And they didn't want 25 horses a day coming up through there and discouraging everybody. They tried to keep the death out of the eyes of all the patients here. We were one of the first places to implement double-sided elevators. This elevator goes all the way up to the fourth floor, right outside that main OR. Um, you were one of those unlucky 95% that didn't pull through thoracoplasty. They'd load you up and drop you down here. Open you up the back door and right into the morgue. The main lobby. That's the front door to Waverly Hills. Active in life, active in death. Every patient would have entered through that door, either it had been Waverly Hills or Woodhaven. Now down here we have two particular entities. Um, we can go this way and I'll talk about the one that I like. I like one, one's the reason that I come down here. The other is the reason that I spend about 20 minutes down here. This nice little creepy room right here on my right. It used to be a record vault. Now, this story comes from Woodhaven. You heard my story of the floor of the Forgotten. You could tell Woodhaven wasn't the most ethical place to be back then. As Woodhaven was a geriatrics facility, and most patients with geriatrics or geriatric facility, they had dementia. This little lady had dementia. And if you know anything about dementia, they can remember what they did 30 years ago, but they can't remember what they ate five minutes ago. Before she came up here to live, she was a nurse. Uh, when she came up here, she still thought she was a nurse. Matter of fact, she would follow all the nurses around doing her rounds, thinking she was still on the clock. She was kind of getting in the way under their feet. I guess the head nurse had enough of it that day and said, lock her in the vault. So that's what all the nurses did. They brought her down here and put her in the vault. They left her in here for three days. I guess that's when they thought that she'd had enough punishment. When they come to let her out of the record vault, she had already passed away. Now, people with dementia, they uh, have their good days and their bad days. When she's having her good day, she has a day giveaway. She can remember her name. Uh, she has a real fascination with ladies' hair. Uh, women, when we bring them in here, they always say it feels like something's playing with their hair. Now, on the other side of that, men say it feels like something's struck in the back of their neck. She just has a real fascination with this part of the body. Now, dementia patients, they do have their bad days. When she's having her when she's having her off days, it's kind of like she's a little bit more aggressive. She's like wagging her finger in your face saying, I can take care of myself. Get out of my space. I don't need you here. Makes you feel real uneasy to be in here sometimes. But like I said, she's the sweetest little lady that you could ever think of. Now we'll go out here and talk about the reason that I don't like being in a lot. Now this gentleman, I don't know if he was a resident here, a patient here, a doctor here, or somebody summoned him here, because he is more always negative. Um, like I said, I never get negative energy here besides this man. Um, he's real stuck in his ways. I relate him to everybody's least favorite uncle. 
he doesn't like women. You bring women down here, and uh, through the spirit boxes, we get a lot of the B word, C word, just real derogatory words towards women. He has his own corner down here, which I find very interesting. And it's right here in front of this door. That door leads to the nurse's wing. I think he hangs out in front of there to keep the ladies from coming out and enjoying the rest of the building. A lot of times on those spirit boxes, you can't make it out, but it sounds like a man and a woman arguing. And I like to think he met his match. He's uh, ran into a headstrong nurse that's not gonna put up with his stuff anymore. This is usually where we do our Estes methods because you can fit a lot of people in here and on overnights we'll get about 10 to 15 people down here and set them up in the front door and we start asking questions. Now, my group that night I was fresh. It was probably my fourth time ever getting in helping with investigations. So I was just kind of set off in the back letting them do their own thing. I'll tell you this, I'm a diabetic. These people had no idea. So we were over there doing the Estes Method when all of a sudden the lady goes, too much chocolate, no more sugar. I was like, oh snap. And then all of a sudden, like, so we keep them under for about five minutes because then their brain starts to melt and they just say off the wall things. The last thing this lady says when we pull her out, Jason, and I was like, oh shit, she's talking to me. This gentleman, if you spend enough time here, he gets to know you. And that's not a good thing. Uh, he finds out what you don't like about yourself and kind of uses it to pick at you. And I don't want to bring that energy into the building. I don't want to be angry while I'm down here. So that's why well, I only spend about 20 minutes down here. What I do is I stare at those two rooms down at the very end of that corner. That's a kitchenette and dinette. If you aren't healthy enough to make it to the main one, that's where you got to eat. A lot of activity went on through there. Active in life, active in death. Like I said, we have an on-run joke. We call this floor the touchy-filly floor. So, the other night I was just standing here, watching that room, waiting to see my shadow come out. When all of a sudden I felt a hand caress down my back. I'm not usually one to react to stuff, like I said, because I don't want to influence other people's investigations. But that got a reaction out of me. I turn around and OS oh, word. That's usually what you get from me. I had that hand feeling down my back for like the next 10 minutes, like a residual energy. It was like the craziest thing. I get a lot of kid energy up here. Uh, first time I ever saw a shadow person was back that way. We were walking down the second time I ever did an investigation here. Me and my buddy Jason were just walking and all of a sudden you see a head. Do one of those quick numbers out of the double occupancy side. We both stop and look at each other, kind of reassuring that we each saw the same thing. Peekaboo! I played peekaboo for like six minutes, and by the time I stopped, I had four heads two coming out of the terminal side, two coming out of this double occupancy side. Or, like I said, I can go in and tell you all these stories I've heard about this nurse. They're not very pleasant. Um, but I tell everyone, I think it's a load of crap. We don't have many death records from the patients here because we had uh, a flood that destroyed most of them and then two fires were set in the building and pretty much wiped out a lot of our patient history and records like that. But there's a reason that I tell my guests that her story's a bunch of BS, but I don't tell her her story's a bunch of BS. Um, Usually when we have spirit boxes going on up here, we get a lot of the same words. A lot of attack, assault, he hurt me. Uh, even my neck a few times, which I, I think is really ironic if you know any of the stories about this nurse. But I tell everyone, the Native Americans had a word for it. They referred to it as tulpa. Speak it to existence. You put enough thought behind something, it develops this kind of energy of its own and it uh, finds a way of showing itself. And I think that's what we got going on here with this nurse. So many of these horrible stories that have been told about her, it shows itself. Um, but I tell everyone, if you come up here and are just focused on the nurse, you tend to miss what goes on around you. 
Like I said, the room back there was a 16 bed ward for children, the sickest of the sick children. And behind me was a 16 bed ward for patients with tubercular meningitis, TB of the brain, where that electroshock therapy room kind of came in handy. A lot of times we get what looks like a little boy in this middle room, and surprise, surprise, that middle room was used as a dinette of sorts. They seem to be very active on all the floors. His photo's been taken a time or two in that left-handed window. But what I find really funny is people will come up here with like their rim pods and uh, trigger on, like, objects and they'll set it up on that table and just be staring at it and nothing ever happens to them. It's not until they put like a little trinket or a piece of candy beside it that it wants to light up like the 4th of July. And I like to think of it as a kid saying, I'm not going to do what you tell me to do until I can get something out of it. Oh, actually, 502 is just a bathroom. I tell everyone it's the most haunted bathroom in America next to Graceland. I have a photo on my phone taken from the outside of the bathroom, pointed into the bathroom, and it's a man sitting there with his arms crossed. I like to think of him as our residential maintenance man. Because like I said, it's about a two-year-old photo, but about Two and a half months ago, somebody showed me the exact same photo of this gentleman. Except he wasn't up here on five, he was down there on four. So I like to think that he's making his way through the building, still making sure it's up to his code. Let's have a look at one of these sanatoria, or tuberculosis hospitals as they're called today. Real hospitals for the tuberculous, and not merely resting places. Here we are in a large southern sanatorium. This one has beds for 500 patients. Altogether, there are now 90,000 such beds available. Rest and more rest, as Trudeau discovered when he himself took the cure as a young doctor. Yes, and good food. Nowadays, doctors don't stuff patients with more milk and eggs than they can digest. Just good, well-balanced meals, enough to gain weight on. Mmm. Smell those delicious loaves. New ways of resting the lung have been developed. This patient is getting pneumothorax treatment. Air is let into the chest cavity, and that rests the lung so that it can heal. When the diseased lung is fully healed, it is allowed to expand again. A lifesaver for many. Nestled atop a hill in southwestern Louisville, Kentucky, lies a building as steeped in history as it is in mystery, the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Constructed in 1910, Waverly Hills was initially a small two-story hospital designed to accommodate 40 to 50 tuberculosis patients. However, in the face of the tuberculosis epidemic that swept across the United States in the early 20th century, the small hospital quickly became insufficient. A larger hospital was needed. And so, in 1926, a new five-story building capable of housing over 400 patients was erected. This was the Waverly Hills Sanatorium, as we know it and love it today. Among the many features of this historic hospital, one of the most notable were the solariums. These rooms filled with light and warmth were a significant aspect of the patient treatment process. At a time when antibiotics were not yet available, the primary treatment for tuberculosis was known as the fresh air treatment. This approach was based on the belief that sunlight and fresh air were not just beneficial, but essential in treating patients suffering from this disease. Now what they didn't know at the time is that tuberculosis is actually an airborne disease. It can easily be spread from person to person through tiny droplets released into the air when an infected person coughs or sneezes. With this in mind, the very nature of these open air sanatoriums, where patients were often kept in close quarters, could unintentionally facilitate the rapid spread of the disease, and it did. Despite the best efforts of its dedicated staff, the sanatorium was a place of immense suffering and loss. Many patients did not survive, succumbing to the disease they so bravely battled. The advent of the antibiotic drug, streptomycin, saw a significant decline in tuberculosis cases, rendering Waverly Hills obsolete. In 1961, it was closed down as a tuberculosis hospital. It was then repurposed as the Woodhaven Geriatrics Facility, but reports of patient mistreatment led to its closure in 1982, and more specifically, people were found on the fourth floor chained 
to the walls. Today, the Waverly Hills Sanatorium stands as a haunting relic of the past. It has been claimed to be one of the most haunted places in America, if not the world. And tonight, me and Savannah will be testing that theory to see how terrifying this place truly can be. All right, guys, so we're about to start the investigation portion here at Waverly Hills, and I haven't dropped the bombshell on Savannah yet. You're already making me nervous. What do you mean? What bombshell? Go ahead and tell me. Let, let me let me get it over with. You are going to be alone. Okay. On the fifth floor. No. With no flashlight. No. And a piece of equipment or two. Okay. And a walkie-talkie. I, so I can at least radio you if, you know, I'm about to die. So that's good. So, guys, this could be the end of Savannah. I'm not going alone. You're, you're going alone. No, I'm going alone to the body shoot. I don't care. I don't want to go alone. Well, she's going alone. Um, if anything happens, uh, a great video, hopefully. I don't know. I, I think I need a better incentive. I, I don't want to go by myself. Well, regardless, she's going by herself. I'm going by myself. We're going to start this thing off with two solos in the most haunted place in America alone. Before we start the video, comment Waverly Hills is scary down below and make sure you like and subscribe this video. We're going to pick one lucky winner for a t-shirt from our comment section, but let's go ahead and start these solos. Wait, say that again? I heard keys dangling. I heard like the tarp from the wind and I was like, oh, this is the tarp. And then I heard like keys dangling, like there was somebody coming to open the door. On the fifth floor, right? On the fifth floor? Yeah. I'm literally shaking. Savannah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I just heard something. I just heard something at the end of my hallway and you're not coming through very clear, so I wonder if there's something messing with the walkies. Okay, so a lot of sadness up here. Yeah, and you might even get some playful kids, so not all bad, but definitely active. Uh, there is a story about a nurse, but I don't really think it's that true. So focus more on the kids and less on the nurse story. So try and see if you can get a kid to come through or somebody on the other side with tuberculosis in the brain, and uh, let's see what we get. Okay, well, I'm already scared, so I'm about to get started. Well, I... Uh, wish you the best, and if something happens, just call, and I'll try and get there. That's promising. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> There's no way I'm getting there, or even getting the call. So, uh, yeah. I've literally left my life, or my wife, in the scariest building on earth by herself and I'm sending her to the two really active spots but we're gonna get started down here all right for anyone that's here with me I mean you no harm like I've said my name is Kalani I've been here many times but this is the first time I've ever been alone with you I've heard there's a dark presence that hangs out at the bottom of this tunnel I invite that dark presence to join me up here. You don't have to be afraid of me. I'm not afraid of you. But I know at least 6,000 people would pass through the chute. So if there's any of those 6,000, 
that are still here with me that would like to talk. I want to be uh, an ear for you and hopefully be a way for you to feel comfort when sometimes you may feel alone. So if you can hear my voice, can you make a loud noise for me? If you come up to this light right here, you can make it change colors and give us a sound. Okay, that's a motorcycle outside. I need you to do something for me. Maybe make a loud knock. Okay, we're gonna run a voice memo section. So I don't use any ghost hunting apps but I will use voice memo on the iPhone. It works really well as a EVP recorder. Even gives us a waveform. All right, if there's anything here with me, can you come forward and whisper or shout into this device we have here? Did you pass away in this building? Okay, so I'm shaking. Right as I was about to get my equipment out and set up, um, I heard like movement, but I think it's the tarps from the wind. So I tell myself it's okay. And then I hear keys dangling, like someone's trying to open a door. And I kid you not, I have never been that scared. I think it's because I'm alone. Like, my, my heart is beating. I'm definitely more on edge. Um, and I feel like because I'm by myself, I'm hearing, like, every little noise. Every little knock, every little, like, thing that I think is a footstep or something. So, now that I've calmed down as much as I can, um, I've got my equipment out. I've got the Epic. I have a cat ball and then also a music box. So, let's see what we get. I'm honestly terrified and cannot wait for the solo sessions to be over. I never realized how much of a comfort blanket Kalani was because now that I'm by myself, I'm like, holy shit, this is terrifying. Okay, so I've got my Epic right there. Um, I have my music box pointing towards the door where maybe, I guess, like nurses would have come in and out of. And then I also have a cat ball that I'm hoping maybe I can get a kid to play with. Um, kids usually like cat balls, they light up. So we'll see. I guess first I'll just start by asking some questions. Um, my name is Savannah. I've been here once before. So you might remember me, but I also feel like you probably get a lot of visitors. So you might not remember me. If not, that's fine. Uh, I just want to communicate with you, talk to you, maybe figure out a little bit of your story. Are you willing to communicate with me? If so, there's a blue device right in front of me. It won't hurt you. And green is yes, red is no. Could you set that off to let me know that you'd like to communicate with me? Or make a loud, audible noise? What the heck? Thank you.
Okay, can you tell me, were you a kid here? Are you a child? Okay. Are you under the age of 10? Can you tell me if you're under the age of 10? I have a ball on the ground over here that lights up if you touch it. And if you'd like to, we could play a game with that. We could kick it back and forth. Do you think that you could come over to this ball that I'm looking at and move it for me? What the hell was that? Holy shit. It's, I heard the keys again. It's the same thing I just heard. It's like keys dangling. But it was from this side before, this time it was from that side. I'm not kidding. I am so on edge right now. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to calm down or I'm not going to be able to investigate at all. What the hell was that? That sounded like a knock. That just said yes. I, I'm almost hearing like whispering, like talking maybe. It's like a mumble though. Okay, the kid that I was talking to, are you still here with me? Do you still wanna communicate? If you would rather use something other than this blue device, there's also something else on that table that if you walk in front of it plays music. Could you walk in front of that for me? You know, you guys, the vibe up here is very sad. Um, it feels heavy, not necessarily not like in a mean way, but it just feels heavy and I definitely feel like the sorrow and the sadness. I mean, some of the worst patients would have been up here and then obviously um, the little kids. So there's definitely a heavy feeling. Oh, yes, they agree. I bet what you went through here was really hard. I can't even imagine. Could you make a loud audible noise for me? Could you knock on one of the walls? We could play hide and seek. If you wanna knock somewhere, I can come find where the knock is. That actually sounds so terrifying. Can you knock on the wall somewhere for me? Okay, you said yes. I appreciate you communicating with me. So we can play a little game. Oh, now you're saying no. Maybe that device is confusing for them to use. And they're trying to figure out how to use it. If you can hear my voice, could you knock on a wall for me? Okay, knock anywhere up here. <gasps> Holy shit. Holy shit. Please tell me you guys heard that knock. Holy shit. What the heck? Okay, I heard that knock. Can you knock somewhere else?
Can you knock for me in another room? Part of me is terrified and the other part of me thinks that is so cool. Let's play hide and seek. Can you knock in another room for me? I think I found where the first knock was. Sounds like footsteps coming from that way. That EVP session kind of got ruined by me jumping around, but let's listen back, anyways. something behind me. Did you pass away in this building? It literally sounds like footsteps coming from that way. I heard this was supposed to be a scary part of Waverly Hills. So, right now I want something to scare me out of here. I know that this is a very active place. And you won't hurt my feelings. But I want you to try and get me to run out of here. Can you do that for me tonight? Is there like a hum? Hello? I heard something behind me again. It seems like whenever you're focused on one side, you hear a noise on the other. It's like playing a game. You want me to sing you a song? I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do ya? Well it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major the baffled king composes hallelujah 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 That is insane. One of the coolest 
acoustics I've heard in a long time. If you like that song, can you uh, give me a sign and I'll sing you another. If you want me to sing another song, can you knock twice? <gasps> That's one. Can you do one more knock? Something literally just knocked once. Can you do another one? Knock one more time and I'll sing for you again. That was my ankle. Were my eyes playing tricks or did I thought, I thought I saw something at the end of the hole. But it could just be my eyes. Knock one more time and I'll sing for you again. Maybe some Johnny Cash? Or, um, I got another old song I can sing for you. Just knock one more time for me. So we had one really loud knock. It sounded like something just knocked. Oh, I've got chills. I've got chills over my entire body right now. That was freaky. Okay. I told you I'd sing again. Ooh, I've got chills all over. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night. I've got chills right now. Can you knock again and I'll sing another song? I need you to knock really loud. Knock on the count of three. One, two, three. Please knock for me. So right here I turned off the auto focus on my camera because you hear that clicking sound. I got irritated with it, but what comes next sent a shiver up my spine. Can you knock for me, please? Shit! Oh, uh, that, that, that sent a shiver down my spine. 
Oh, oh I've got I've got literal chills. I wasn't expecting it. That was freaky. Can you do that again? I've got I've got tingles all over my entire body. That was freaky. On the count of three, do it again. One, two, three. I was not expecting that on command like that like thank you for doing that for me I know I was asking for it but you kind of caught me off guard a little bit I did tell you to scare me out of here though all right I'm back oh shit There's a really cool breeze in here now. I don't I don't get feelings like this often, but that is creepy. It sounded like legitimate steps. Oh shit. Okay, thank you. Is that you wanting more singing? I'm gonna try not to piss my pants and sing another song for you, okay? Oh my gosh. My heart is pumping, folks. My heart is pumping. This place alone is a completely different animal. Does not happen often. I am a little bit scared. It's just so loud. They're so intentional. Okay. Every time I look at you, I fall in love. All over again. Every time I think of you, it all begins. All over again One little dream at night and I can dream all day It only takes a memory to thrill me One little kiss from you and I just fly away Pour me out your love until you fill me I want to fall in love beginning from the start all over again show me how you stole away my heart all over again man i do not feel good down here i think i'm freaking myself out to be honest with you but Okay, you guys, so I had that knock because I was asking, could we play hide and seek? Could you knock somewhere and I'll come find it? That happened once. I really want it to happen again, so I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to kind of listen and just see if I hear anything, try to stand still and just focus like on what my ears are hearing. So if there's anyone up here with me that would like to interact with me or play hide and seek, if you're a kid, could you knock somewhere up here? on a wall and then I will come to wherever you knock. We can play hide and seek that way. Please tell
tell me you heard that. Please tell me you heard that. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Okay, I found your second knock. This is actually so scary and so cool. I found your second knock. Can you give me one more? Can you give me one more knock somewhere? What the hell was that? What the hell was that? It sounded like feet going like this. shaking bust out the accent whenever I get scared I would just like you guys to know where I'm standing is pitch black and I cannot see anything except for what's on my little bitty screen okay okay oh let's try to get something else another piece of equipment to go off okay I gotta focus Okay, so we've been playing hide and seek, which, really cool by the way. So now that we've interacted a little bit, can you come back to this blue device over here so I can ask you some questions? Just get to know you a little bit better. Can you let me know if you can hear me by confirming yes on the blue device? It sounds like somebody's going fast on the interstate. It's such a weird feeling here to feel so isolated. Like you feel so isolated and like almost in the middle of nowhere but yet the interstate is really not too far like it, it's a really weird this building itself and I think just because of what happened here has that really isolating feeling um I don't know it's just it's got its own vibe for sure Kalani, can you hear me? Kalani, can you hear me? I feel like y'all surely heard the key jangling noise just now. It happened again. Hello, Kalani. Please answer. It's not a good sign. It's not answering. Excuse me, Kalani. Hello. What the hell was that? Holy, I, I'm ready to leave. This has been long enough. I know you heard that. That was loud as shit. Kalani, hello. Please answer. Nothing. Are you okay? Here's the thing, you guys. I've only been here one other time. I have no idea how to get around. And Kalani's supposed to be giving me my next spot I'm supposed to go to. Um, and I don't know how to get there, so I'm trying to get him to answer me so I can go somewhere else and he's literally not coming through, so that's not the best sign. Tell me about it later. If you tell me now, you're going to freak me out. Okay, so I think I'm going to move to body lockers. Uh, you move to fourth floor. Let me know when you're there. All right, I'm packing up now. 
Oh my gosh. It wasn't anything bad, like nothing negative, but just how on command those loud noises were was freaky with a capital F. Um, that was like a fight or flight mode almost. Like I wanted to get out of there, but the investigator in me was like, no, you can't. You literally are asking for it and they're giving it to you. That was nuts. That was the... This place is completely different when you're alone, like I've already said. Now we're gonna go to an even worse spot, the body locker. Man, I'm on edge right now. I'm literally on edge. Okay. I'm not even trying to exaggerate. That was one of the scariest sessions I've ever had. And I think it, I felt, I felt like there was things surrounding me from both sides. And I was asking it to make noises, but it really freaked me out. Welcome to Waverly Hills. This place ain't no joke. Okay, we're waiting on her to come back through. I have had some insane activity. So we are standing in the morgue and this camera is sitting in a body locker where 6,000 people's bodies would have laid. 6,000 people. I just can't even fathom that. The amount of energy that's in this building I think makes it very different from other places from the amount of death that literally took place in these walls. I think it makes a big difference, really do. I'm gonna put the rim pod underneath. I, need, I just need a second to gather myself. Uh, the body shoot had me freaking out, man. Freaking. And I don't think it was bad. I think I freaked myself out because of how present they were in the body shoot. I think I do want to do a group session tonight with me and Savannah in this room and in the body shoot, especially after that experience we just had. Because I'm still, like, stunned. I, I really don't know what to say, guys. Whew. All right. Let's check in with Savannah and see what she's doing. Okay, I'm on the floor. Okay, uh, REM pod's going off from the walkie-talkie. Give me one sec. That is what walkie-talkie does to a REM pod if it's too close. Okay, so are you ready to hear what's on the fourth floor? No, I'm not the music box going off. Your music box is going off? Whatever just walked in front of the music box, could you walk in front of that again for me, please? What the hell is that? I hear 
something at the end of the hallway. I can't, with my eyes, even see to the end of the hallway. Are you ready to hear what's on four? I just heard something at the end of the hallway. I guess so. The four is where people have seen the creeper. This entity likes to crawl up and down the walls on the ceiling. And many people have documented sightings of the creeper. And it doesn't stop there. There's another entity called Big Black. And the only way people describe it is it literally will block out all visible light that you can see. And then out of nowhere, it just dissipates. I'm literally going to shit myself. I'm not even kidding. I almost did in the body locker or in the, in the, uh, the, the shoot. It was, it was scary. I have not felt like that. What the hell was it that? Was so dark, um, but we're going to run this solo and then we'll probably link up after this one most likely. And then uh, we'll go from there. But if you need anything, just holler at me because I have better reception here. Okay, bye. Good luck. Connie was talking, but I don't know what that was that just made a noise. Okay, so, uh, terrifying information. The big black shadow and the crawler. Um, not feeling confident, not feeling great. Okay? Feel like I'm actually gonna pee my pants. I had Taco Bell before this, and it's not settling well with me because I'm really scared. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Okay, I need to not be a baby. I need to not be a baby. I need to get over myself. I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. Okay. Whew. Okay, if there's anything that can hear my voice, I don't mean you any harm. I just wanna communicate with you. I've got several devices we can communicate with each other using. I've got a blue box over here. Green is yes, red is no. I have a little ball by my feet that lights up if you move it. And then to my left, I have a music box that unfortunately I think is uh, not playing music right now, but if you walk in front of it, I'll still be able to know that you're with me. So. I would really appreciate if you would use any of this equipment or if you just want to make an audible noise for me. You guys, I don't think I've ever been this scared my whole entire life. So out here, is like the solarium area um this is the open air like these are the windows and it's all open this is where they would have gotten the fresh air okay i feel like i just heard something am i freaking myself out maybe maybe i'm very okay that's just the dog i need to calm down Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm a little bit scared, everyone. <laughs> There's the accent again. <laughs> I'm telling you, whenever I'm scared, I think I, I think I do that to like comfort myself. I don't know. Look, I'm just gonna say, I'm not venturing too far down that hallway by myself. I am not. I'm staying by the stairs. Okay, if anything can hear my voice, can you make a loud, audible noise for me, please? I'm like paralyzed with fear right now. What was that? What was that? Oh, fuck! Oh my gosh, shit! Holy shit! Holy shit. Holy shit. Fuck. Fuck. Okay. Those were bats. Oh my gosh. Oh hell. Okay. Oh, those were bats. Those were bats. Some bats just almost made me pee myself. Oh. Kalani, can you hear me? What? 
Well, that's me. Some bats just almost made me pee myself. A bat did what? Almost made me pee myself. Oh. <laughs> oh. I don't know how much investigating I can get done. I, I'm, I'm ter- I'm honestly terrified. I can't even freaking talk. Okay, it's just me and the camera. Me and the camera. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <gasps> what the hell? Can you set that off again for me, please? You guys, the light you're seeing is from the little light in the... <gasps> Thank you! Can you stand in front of that so it'll keep going off? Just walk back in front of that device. That's crazy. What the heck? Just walk back in front of that device for me. I would really appreciate it. Or maybe you want to use this blue device right here. That said no. Okay, I'm gonna ask one more time just to confirm. Do you want to use this device in front of me for us to communicate? We can talk back and forth using yes or no questions. Just come to this device and let me know if you'd like to communicate or not. Oh my gosh, I'm so on edge. My body is dripping in sweat. These solos cannot be over fast enough. Oh my gosh. What? What was that? That sounded like a little step down there. If there's someone with me at the end of the hallway, could you walk towards me if you can see me or walk towards my voice? I heard it again. Can you keep walking this way? I don't know what I'm hearing, but I'm hearing something down there. Can you walk towards my voice, please? There's anybody that can hear me? Could you make a knock? Maybe knock on one of the walls? What was that? That was a knock. Could you, okay. Could you knock again for me, please? If you would like to push that light to let me know that you're here with me, that would be great. My name is Kalani. I've been here many times. But this is the first time I've ever been here alone. Can you come up and touch that red device for me? Maybe you don't like it being in the body locker. Let's move it out for you. We'll put it on the embalming table. Okay. All right, I wanna do an EVP session in here and I'm gonna tell you why.
Okay, so the first time I ever came here, I laid in this body locker. We were streaming a live stream on TikTok. And I literally had two voices come through on my stream that I didn't hear and I wasn't even looking for. I wasn't even investigating. I was just taking in laying in the body locker. So we're going to see if we can catch any of those voices now. Here we go. Three, two, one. If there's anybody here that, that knows me or would like to speak with me today, can you come forward to this device in my hand and say hello? Last time that you came through for me, it sounded like there was children in here. So if the children would like to come through now, can you tell me what your favorite color is? I had to restart. I had to restart the camera because the recording time on this camera is like 30 minutes. So let's listen back to what we got before I had to cut. There's anybody here that, that knows me or would like to speak with me today? Can you come forward to this device in my hand and say hello? What? What? A bat did what? Made me pee myself. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Something just made my. Oh, shh. I don't. Freaking my pants are. My phone's going off in my damn pants. What? I don't know. Can you tell me anything about your mom? <sighs> Last time that you came through for me, it sounded like there was children in here. So if the children would like to come through now, can you tell me what your favorite color is? All right, let's try another one. All right. So Savannah said a bat almost made her shit her pants. Solid. Can you tell me your name, please? Can you tell me who was trying to scare me in the body shoot? Can you make a loud noise in this room, please? Can you tell me what year it is for you? Ending EVP. That was me at the end. Um, again, this is voice memo on the iPhone. It's not a ghost hunting app. I don't use any of the apps. This is really good. If you don't have a recorder at home, this is a solid recorder without having to spend money on a mediocre recorder. There are better ones like my Zoom H4n Pro is really nice, but sometimes I like using this too. Can you tell me your name, please? Can you 
tell me who was trying to scare me in the body shoot? Maybe that was my step? I don't know. Can you make a loud noise in this room, please? Can you tell me what year it is for you? Can you give me pee? Okay. I didn't hear anything on that one. It's been relatively quiet in here. Nothing like the body shoot. But I do feel like when I crawl into the body locker in this room, there tends to be more activity. And I don't know if it's because you're in the body locker, there's that state of vulnerability, or if it just depends on the entities here. Does anything here, can you touch that red light? Okay, so we're not really getting much in here. I might just walk around on the bottom floor for a minute because the REM pod hasn't gone off, we weren't really getting anything, and I've got really bad ADD. <laughs> so sitting here doesn't uh, tickle my fancy if nothing's going on. But that's real ghost hunting. Like a lot of times you're sitting in empty rooms and not getting squat for hours. A lot like fishing. You could have the best bait, best boat, and uh, you won't catch anything. Best rods, forgot the rods there. Okay guys, I'm honestly just very freaked out and I feel like I hear like little footsteps at the end of the hallway. Almost like little shuffling. So I'm gonna walk Ikwani to come to me because I just feel really uncomfortable. Um, and hopefully he says yes because my solo is not supposed to be over yet but I cannot be alone anymore. Hey Kwani, can you come up here? I feel really uncomfortable and I feel like I hear like little shuffling. Where are you at? On the fourth floor, kind of near the staircase, the, the middle staircase. It's like stuff at the end of the hallway. Stairs. I shit you not, something just touched one of like the metal uh, rails on the wall up here. Where are you at? I'm by the staircase, the middle staircase on the fourth floor. Alright, I'm coming. Man, that's a lot of stairs. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh my gosh, I almost peed my pants multiple times. Why? First was the bats, then I heard like a, I was like asking for a loud knock, there was a knock, and then, is this metal right here? Yeah, it sounded like somebody went with their fingernail and went like this. Really? Like a little ding, yeah. Wow.
Oh, there's a bat. Where? It's from my ass. Oh. I, I do not like that. <laughs> How was your solo? I don't know if I, I don't know if I freaked myself out. I definitely heard stuff. I heard sh like shuffling of people's feet. Um, upstairs, really cool. I was playing hide and seek by them knocking on the wall. I had it happen like three times. Um, it was cool, but I was terrified, so I couldn't really enjoy it. I just I think you're my security blanket because being alone like has a whole different vibe to it. Well, I'm gonna shit my pants. <laughs> we're gonna go to the body shoot together. Um, no. We're gonna go together. No. We have to. All the way down it? No. I was at the top. Let's get the gear. Let's go to the gear room real quick. Swap out some stuff. Okay. And we're about to start our duo, so we're gonna we're, go to the gear room really quick. We're gonna be doing SD we'll the body shoot again. Right. The body we lockers. To put the battery and the lock in the SB11. So. <sighs> I'm now alone. I'm alone again inside of Body Shoot, which I've already been terrified with once tonight. All right, I don't have a light this time. Can you come say hello? Shit, there, there it is again. It's gonna take more than that this time to get me to react. It sounds like there's walking again. It literally sounds like there's something walking down there. Can you knock three times on the count of three? One, two, three. This place is not for the faint of heart. This is one of the scariest places I've ever been alone. And I don't say that lightly. Hello? All right, I'm glad that's you. Are you excited to talk with us? What? Okay, if 
you're the one that tried to scare me earlier, can you touch that device for us? All right. I'm gonna face this way. Okay. Tell me your name. My body feels like squirming. Denon. Can you tell me your name, please? I'm gonna step out into the Are you hiding out down here? Denon. Is this where your body was carried out? I just heard something by the door. Oh, it's starting again. She doesn't hear it, which is a good thing. She'd be shitting her pants. Who keeps making all these loud noises? We're hearing noise. Hmm. How powerful are you? I just heard a voice. I just heard a voice. I saw you running, I was like, hell, I'm out too. Oh my heart. I just heard a legit voice. Beating so fast. <sighs> Shit. Okay, let's go back. No, no, no. Just a little bit. We didn't even get to... Oh my gosh. I saw you breeze past me. I ripped my head from the top and started looking. Oh, man. Oof. Okay, well, that was terrible. That's where I heard the voice. Oh, fuck. Okay, well, okay, I'll stay right here. I'll stay right here. I was trying to see if I could, if there was anybody down there. But there's no one else in the building. This building is on a completely different level tonight, and I don't really like Me? it. Did we just hear you? Yes. What is your name? I feel very uncomfortable. I don't want to get Can you tell me your name? Can you tell me your name, please? Did I hear you speak? Okay, I'm not kidding much, but have you thought about this? What about the fact that the voice came from towards the morgue? What are you saying, go to the morgue? Because the voice came from the opposite end of the hallway. I mean, maybe. There's not really much coming through here. The me was creepy. It was like me. I asked if that was, did we hear you? And then you said me. Okay, well, let's go to Morgan then, because I want to crawl in the body locker. So, I think I'm going to crawl into the body locker. Yeah. So, you keep this camera. Okay. I'm going to do Estes inside the body locker. Okay. You ask questions out here, and we're going to see if... Ooh. We get anything. And then we're gonna save 
your last Estes for the lobby because they said that there was a particular corner where there was a dark entity. Oh my gosh. That wants to communicate through Estes. No. I'm sorry. You've got to, you're kidding. Okay. Here you go. I don't even know how you begin to get in this thing, to be honest. It's a tight squeeze. How do I sync the audio? It's already synced if you leave it running recording. It, I, my foot, finger accidentally hit it. Make it loud like. That was probably good. All right. What do you want me to I can put the camera on top of this and I can film myself asking questions. Okay, we are literally laying in the same spot that 6,000 other bodies laid. Crazy. But this is inside of a body locker, and I'm going to put the headphones on. This is a good time to remind you guys, make sure you subscribe if you like what I do. Currently laying in a body locker, but I'll do a lot more for a lot less. Okay. Give me like a tap or something. All right. Tight squeeze. All right, ready? Okay, is there anybody down here that wants to communicate with us? We've heard that there's a little boy down here that you like to play hide and seek. If you're down here, could you come through and talk to us? Man, the vibe in here compared to the body shoot, totally different. Don't get me wrong, this is creepy, but the body shoot, I can't even describe to you what it feels like. And it's so long, you can't see the end of it. That, that's just a whole different experience. This is creepy, but in a different way. If there's anybody here with us that wants to communicate, we'd love for you to come forward. Could you maybe give me your name? Or if you don't want to communicate using the box and the body locker, you can knock on something, make a loud audible noise for me to hear. What you guys heard moving around was Kalani's foot. My name is Savannah and the very interesting man in the body locker is my husband Kalani. Um, and the device that he's holding, you can communicate with us using. I haven't had like anything come through at all. Interesting. If there's anybody down here willing to come forward, we would really love to talk to you. Maybe just give us your name or tell us, were you a patient here? Were you um, a nurse here? Did you have a family member here? Anything. We heard a voice at the end of the body shoot and I felt like it might be calling us in this direction. Do you happen to know who the voice was? Was it you or someone that you know? It's so quiet in here. Almost too quiet that it's like spooky. Like there's nothing, I haven't heard a noise. I don't think he hasn't said anything. Nothing's come through on Estes. We're gonna have to leave soon. 
That almost gave me a heart attack. I think that was the employee opening the door upstairs. Oh gosh, okay. All right, I'm not getting nothing. Okay, Kalani ain't getting nothing. Do you wanna switch or do you think we should go to the lobby? I mean, as much as I don't wanna go to the lobby, I feel What's like, that? I think it might be the employee opening the door upstairs. As much as I don't want to go to the lobby, I feel like we have to go to the lobby. All right, let's make Savannah go do Estes where the dark entity is in the lobby. Okay, so this is going to be, I think, our last stop for tonight is the lobby. Anyone that checked in or checked out of Waverly came through here. So Savannah, you don't know this, but on the tour that I took, mm -hmm. that is the corner where the dark entity hangs out. And that's where you're making me And stand. that's where you're going. So, by all means. Okay. Do I have to go all the way in the corner? Yes, all the way in the corner. How about right here? Nope, keep going. Yeah, there you go. Don't leave me. I won't. Thomas? Yeah. Hey, you. Hello? TB. TB tuberculosis. Do you have tuberculosis? Here. What year is it for you? Oh, the energy feels so different down here. Like, almost like a brick is on my chest. Okay. So, I've heard that you've, that was like a creepy man you, voice. you've made people feel oppressed. Uh, or a pressure down here. Kalani. That's my name, I've been here before. Do you know me? Hello? Hello? Scorch. What do you mean, Scorch? Do you keep the nurses in the nurses' wing? Bad I did. Do you still do it to this day? These like underlying screams. Can you tell me about the woman that died in the cell over here? My stomach is in knots. Are you making Savannah feel sick? Sure. Why are you making her feel that way? Is there a reason not you, happy. you're not happy with us being here? No. Nope. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know if there is anything you can do about it. Getting like a cold sensation kind of by my leg. You're going to have to do more than that to get us out it's of like here. It's swirling. You're going to have to do more than that to get us out. Oh, man. What's your name? <sighs> Can you tell me your name? Not talking. Why don't you tell me your name? Stop being a coward. With you. Oh, you don't, you don't want to talk to me. That's right. Well, I want to talk to you. Keep to myself. No, I'd rather hear what you'd have to say. Why do you make people... Uh, why do you make people feel uncomfortable down here? More of those screams. It's like women though. Are you doing something to them? Are you trapping them in there? Are you trapping those women in there? I feel there? like something's watching me from this side. Where I've got that cold like feeling, that sensation by my leg. Are you making Savannah feel uncomfortable? You're right. Why? Are you attacking her because you can't attack? Yes. Are you attacking her because you can't attack me? Is that what it is? You feel like you can pick on her but not pick on me? Creepy voice said leave. No, we're not leaving. 
If you're so strong, why don't you make Savannah take those headphones off? Oh, what was that? Wait. Did I just hear you next to me? Something just touched that. Kentucky? Just touched this case. Kentucky. These uh, bookcases right here. Can you do something else? I think I'm gonna vomit everywhere. Is that Savannah? I really think I'm gonna vomit. Are you making Savannah feel sick? Oh, leave. Well, what if we don't wanna leave? I'm down here. I can tell. Can you make that red light on the table go off? No. Oh, you just don't want to communicate? You just want to make people feel sick? Just her. So you only want to pick on her, huh? Leave. I'm not ready to leave. Go. I'm not ready to leave. Don't argue. I heard something over here again. Now my leg is hot. Are you trying to make her feel sick or something? Haha. <laughs> you don't seem very nice. Leave. You keep saying leave. What's my name? Tell me my name you want me to I'm leave. I'm not feeling good. That's me talking. Tell me my name that you want me to leave. Ha ha. Last. Something's coming. Who's coming? Me. Others. Wait, do you want to hurt us? Do you want to hurt us? I'm starting to feel really lightheaded. Are you making Savannah feel sick? Yep. Is that your way of trying to get us to leave? She's gonna be the only way we walk out of here is if you make us. Leave. Eyes. Around. That was a very creepy, growly voice. There's eyes around? Why don't you do something instead of just look at me? Yes. Do something! I can't breathe very well. Man, you're really going after Savannah, it seems. Why don't you do something to me? Got like pressure on my chest. Do something to me. Stop being a coward. No, I'm done. What? I'm done. I feel sick. Why? I feel like I can't breathe. I have like, it feels like something's just like sitting on my chest and the salivating feeling before you're gonna puke, I'm getting that. You okay? No, I, whatever is in this corner or whatever is just in this room in general, the voice that's coming through is like deep and growly and does not sound happy. So what are you done? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going back under. Oh. No. Okay. That was very scary. Well, guys, on that note, this was going to be our last room. 
Um, but I'm going to get Savannah outside, get her some fresh air. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share this out, subscribe. But being in Waverly Hills alone is a completely different animal. And I've been saying that all tonight. It does not feel the same as when you got a group of 10 people here. No, it feels completely different. I've been here when we had a group of people and I was like, you know, not too bad tonight. Totally different scenario. Totally different. So, uh, definitely different level of activity. Yes. Just so many, not a ton of equipment, the noises but you noises you hear of steps and loud bangs. It's just crazy. Like this building is on a completely well, other level. We were on opposite sides when we did our solos. So like whatever I heard and whatever he heard, it wasn't anyone else other than, I mean, I don't know, something paranormal. But the things you can hear when you're in here alone are crazy. So guys, I would probably move this to one of the more active locations. I mean, I really did get scared there in the body shoot. Yeah, the way your body picks up on like I'd the say energy. this was very, one of the most active places we've been to. For sure. And most active feeling places we've been to. Yes. This year. I mean, Saratoga was crazy. I would put this up there with Saratoga, but we I had that segment, the first segment tonight, I was freaked out. Yeah. So guys, yeah. let me know what you think in the comments below. And we'll see you guys next week, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday.